In this quick tutorial, I want to cover how you can actually receive email alerts when somebody logs in to your server. Now, the scenario would be you're either an owner of an application within your organization and you want to know when, it, when server administrators or application administrators log on to your Windows server. Or you may have a server in the cloud hosted with, let's say, Amazon, and you want to know when the people who manage that environment, that server, log into your particular box to, let's say, perform scheduled maintenance activities. You want to be alerted via email when that occurs. Now, I did a bit of research, and I couldn't actually find anything within Windows that does this out of the box. Now, I know that there may be some third-party tools that we can deploy on the server, maybe monitoring tools or other administrative tools, but I thought maybe that was okay for the large organizations, but what about the small business? So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how within about 10 to 15 minutes of setup, you can very easily configure your Windows server to send you out an email every time somebody connects into that server and logs onto the box using remote desktop. First, let me quickly show you how it works, and then I'll go through and show you all the setup that you need to do in order to have this working. So I'm using a MacBook at the moment, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to my Windows server, which I've hosted with Amazon. So I'm going to remote desktop into that particular box, and then I'm going to show you that by doing that, immediately I get notified through an email. Let me just close some of these things that are already open from my previous session. Now that I've logged on, I'm going to switch over back to my laptop, and I'm going to show you that the system automatically sends me out an email notifying me that, hey, someone has logged in. So you can see, here's the email that I've just received. It's from a, a dummy Gmail account that I just set up just for this purpose. The email address I've used here is my private remote server at gmail.com. I'm going to click into that email and show you what it does. It actually sends me a text file with the details of who's logged in. So here's the details of my server IP. I can see that the user account used to log into that machine is the administrator. And I can also see here on the right hand side the IP address of the person that uh, had actually logged into that machine. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I come over here to Windows and I do a search on what is my IP address, you can see that's my IP address. That's the one that I've used to connect into my Windows server hosted with Amazon. And if I go back to the email, you can see that that's the address that my particular setup here has tracked and notified me that, hey, somebody using the administrator account has logged in to this server with this IP address and through this particular PC. So now that you can see what the system does, let me walk you through how to set this up for your own server. I'm gonna go back into the Windows server. Now the first thing you need to do, let me open up my Windows Explorer here, I have a couple of script files in a folder that I've created for my scripts. The first script that you need to do is create a script to actually track the user that has logged on to the machine. Now you do that with these two lines of code here. And don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how this script runs automatically when somebody logs in. So the first thing this thing does is it outputs the current logged on user, which is that first line of command there. And then it goes and looks for the event of what's happening on port 3389, which is what remote desktop uses. Now, if your particular environment uses a different port for remote desktop connections, you can configure the appropriate port in this script. So if I play this here, you'll see at the bottom the output is exactly the same as what we had generated in our file. I'll show you exactly how we sent this output to that text file and how that text file was, was then automatically emailed out. So that's the first file that we need to create using PowerShell commands. The second PowerShell script that we need to generate is a script that actually emails out the file in which we store some of those details. Now here you can see I'm just using 
Gmail as my SMTP server. Now, if your environment is using another SMTP server, you can simply put in the details of your own email server here. Uh, you can see that I'm using a little Gmail account here for sending out emails. Again, you can use whatever email account, whatever email server, whatever protocol that your environment uses to send emails. And then I just fill in the details, like who the email needs to go to, the subject, and here I attach the file that my PowerShell script generates, which tracks who's logged on, what their IP address is, and what account they've used to log into the server. So pretty basic stuff. I'm using the standard email commands of PowerShell to actually generate uh, that email automatically every time somebody connects into my Windows server using remote desktop. Now, how does this all run automatically? Well, I'm using a couple of batch files, but before I get into these batch files, let me show you how I connect it all up. The first thing that you need to do is you need to use what's called Windows Task Scheduler. So let me show you uh, how I've set that up. I'm just going to do a search for Windows Task Scheduler. Let me open that up. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually triggering the system to run these batch files when the system receives a particular event which is connected to remote desktop. So here you go. I'm basically tr tracking event 21 of the Windows Terminal Services process. So let me show you how I've set this up. So I'm going to edit this particular schedule task. And you can see what I've done here is I'm logging whenever this process has detected that somebody is using terminal services, which is what remote desktop protocol uses. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually saying to Windows is whenever you detect someone connect in, logging onto the machine through remote desktop service, then I want you to do this action. Okay, I'm going to show you what that action is in a moment. But first, let me go back to Google Chrome here and let's do a search on terminal services event ID 21 and you can read up on what event ID 21 actually means. It basically tracks, it, it's triggered by Windows every time somebody connects in using terminal services. Okay, now I'm doing this on two specific events. One event I'm using is 21, the other event I'm also tracking is event 25. And if we read up on that, that basically is when somebody reconnects through remote desktop service. So you can read up on these events and you can decide for yourselves if these are relevant for what your scenario is. You can also, you can see there's other events related to remote desktop and you can therefore start to track when the person logs off or maybe send a separate email. So you can start to determine how long that person was logged into your server. So let me go back to the setup. I'll go back to my Windows box and I'll show you that whenever we receive Whenever Windows gets an event ID of 21 through the terminal services process, then I want it to run a particular action. And what that action is, is to go and start this particular batch file, which is a set of commands. And that set of commands is located in the scripts folder. So we're going to look at the login.batch file now. So if I go back to Windows Explorer, I'm going to show you and the commands that I put in here, login.batch, it's very simple. I'm basically starting another script which is located in login2.batch. Now the reason I do that is because I want to run that second script using the start command and I want to run it minimized, okay? So that the user doesn't really see that there's something running in the background and then also more importantly the user can't really interact with that process or be able to stop that process from doing what it needs to do. So let me now show you what are the commands that I've put in to login to dot batch. And really all it is is running those other two scripts that I showed you that I've written in PowerShell. So it's running two scripts using the PowerShell XE process. And it's those two scripts that I've already walked you through. One, which is to capture who's logged in and the IP address used to log in and what's the IP address used uh, in terms of which server they're connecting to and using which account, and the second script, which is to email out the actual file that's produced by the first script, which has all the details, okay? And that's all you need to do. I'm gonna show you also the other scheduled task uh, settings that I've got here, which is, which is capturing event ID 25, and you can see it's doing the exact same thing. So if I edit, the trigger we're still using and tracking the microsoft terminal services process we're looking for 
Event ID 25, which is that reconnection. So because with remote desktop protocol, you can log into the server and you can close your connection and then reconnect. And that's a separate event ID. Okay, without having to re-log in, you can just simply reconnect. So I want to capture both logins and reconnections to the server. And I want to get alerted both when somebody logs into the server or when they're reconnecting to the server. And you can see that the action I'm performing for this event as well is the same. Go and run that login.batch file, which is located in the scripts folder. So you can see it's a pretty easy setup, only a little bit of code and a bit of setup required. And automatically you'll receive emails to whichever email account you want every time somebody connects in to your server and then you can cross-reference that with any planned scheduled maintenance that you may have ongoing.